Business Center also has some very good tools for calculating mass hall workflows. So basically you can optimize the mass hall in Business Center to quickly determine the cheapest way to haul material around the project. So this has been in Business Center for a number of years, but what has been recently added is the ability to create processing sites. So for example, you may blast rock on a project and then we have a ratio of rock going into the crusher and coming out on the far side we have our crushed rock which grows in value as we turn one cubic meter in the ground into smaller granular items. Uh, if there was an element of waste though you could build that into the equation here so we can easily cater for material going into a processing site whether that's sorting from soil and getting rid of different materials on the project. So this is very useful for topsoil stockpiles or rock crushing locations. Um, the other thing which is also new is the ability to create material sets. So basically if you have multiple materials that can be used as type 1 fill, um, you could add both of these in a material set, add that to the corridor and business center will figure out depending on what material is available and cheapest, what material then to use as your type 1 fill along the alignment which is very useful as well. So once you've located all your processing sites, quarries and dump sites around your project, uh, we can see in our section view we have our various fill materials whether that's lesser quality on the batters through to our main core structural fill. We know where that material should be and we also know where that exists either on site that we're excavating through in terms of existing rock or where we're bringing that in from outside sources such as our quarries or our processing sites. So the software is smart enough to figure out what's the cheapest way to move material on a job site. Um, and that then brings us to our mass hall diagram where we can view the accumulative fill over the distance of the job and the accumulative cut. In a very basic scenario, add those two together and we then get our balance. If we have waste material, remove that from the equation and we then add in our borrow material to fill the deficit. Uh, we then have a range of machines shifting that material around the job. So if I look at one of these movements, we can see here we've got material coming from the quarry onto site via an ADT. So coming from this location and going down the job and being used as structural fill in here. So we can look at the details on where we're cutting and filling and what's the volume of material we're bringing onto the job and how much does that cost us. All very useful information can be run off into a range of Excel or PDF reports for later use and investigation. And what we can also do is export this information off to Tylos. So to export out our mass hall plan, we simply go to that in our Project Explorer, then push the export button. Under construction, we have uh, Tylos mass hall XML. And I'm going to send this to my desktop. So we have an XML file. And this literally takes a couple seconds to export, as we see there and we then get our file on the desktop. I can then go across to Tylos and in here we've created a blank project and into this we're going to import that XML file. So hit next, browse to our desktop. Here we have the XML file and we then go about importing that file. That then gives us a range of information. So in our first view, we see we have a design versus an existing profile showing our cut and fill. We then have the soil and rock cut. So if I move along the project, we can then see where we have some rock cut occurring. And we have our balance line from Business Center, which if we wanted to, we could break the job into phases and see where we have enough material to keep our project going. And below that we have our various design information. So our wearing, our base course, 
sub-base and turfing layers as they occur down the job. And then finally we get to our information here of our mass hall diagram. So if I zoom in a bit we can see the various materials, so our volume getting hauled a set distance around the job. There's a range of information so you may have to adjust where this sits to view the various cuts and fills. Now this is the information we need to start scheduling. So what we have in view here is the different cut materials we're cutting through. We're also seeing where materials going off to the crusher, where it's coming in from a quarry and where it's going off to a dump site. So the various colors represent our different materials and we can then see our hauls via different machine types. Below that we have our schedule which is currently blank because we need to select some activities or tasks and start scheduling them. So as a very basic demonstration, what we could look at doing is just filtering to certain material types. So ideally we'd look at stripping the topsoil first, then working through our soil layers and then working with the rock. So it's just a matter of going through and filtering down our different materials that we have on site and from that scheduling those tasks. So what I've done is filter just our existing soil so we can see where that's being dumped off site and because we're not using that as structural fill. So what I can then look at doing is selecting these tasks by pushing Control A and in here selecting to schedule these events. So starting on the 10th of May, push OK and that then starts filling out my schedule. If I then push F9 to refresh the data, that then fills in my resources. So we see where we're planning to cut over time and we also get the various machines that we need at any given time plus our cost and incomes off that information. This is all coming from our template on the far left of the tie loss program. So great integration between Business Center and tie loss for building schedules on a roadway or rail job. That concludes this video. Thank you.